Hi everyone, welcome. Thanks for joining in. Those joining in on, as online, thank you. Good morning. I hope you had a good weekend. Lovely, lovely to see. You. Right. Thanks, guys. Okay, uh, let's pray and we'll get started. Yeah. Father, we submit this day into your hands. We submit this time into your hands, uh, Lord, our learning and everything. Holy Spirit, come and do what you do best. Continue to pour out your wisdom and your knowledge over us, God. I pray that even as we read and learn from your word, Lord, I pray that you would reveal things like never before. I pray that even as you speak, that we would be sensitive to the to the leading of your voice, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Great. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Um, so, in the last class, we covered what? Foundations of grace. Okay. So, what have we covered so far? Everything. Just very quickly. And um, whatever you think, it doesn't have to be in order. Hey, whatever you, comes to your mind uh, first of what we've covered so far, uh, just let me know. A list of God's attributes, okay. List of God attributes, okay. What else have we learned so far? We learned a little bit about worship, guys. This is praise and worship class. At least say that, okay. We learned a little bit about praise and a little bit about worship. <laughs> uh, okay, so with a little bit of definitions of what worship is. Uh, worship is a posture. Thank you, Nina, for sharing. Uh, worship is a posture. Uh, we learned about different postures of praise different postures of, of one posture of worship um, that's all about surrender uh, bro, did you get your notes did you get the hard copy okay and it's, it's fine it's okay uh, it's okay so but uh, please make sure uh, let me know if you don't have one okay we'll ask uh, Kiran to get it for you cool okay uh, what else praise is direct and indirect okay there is power in praise. Awesome. Yeah, there is power in praise. Praise is God's address. Yeah, okay. Hebrew words for praise and worship. Yes, yeah. Uh, the posture of worship. Uh, image is face down. It's a picture of humility. Yes, thanks, Nina, for sharing. Uh, it's a picture of humility. It's a posture of complete surrender. Uh, right? Absolute surrender. Um, what else? We are commanded to praise him. Yeah, a few things that we covered. At least, okay, now we are in chapter three. We looked at uh, the origins of the word praise. Uh, right, it all begins from Judah. Hmm? <laughs> Why should we praise? Uh, when should we praise? All right, guys, uh, online. If you're wondering why I'm smiling, I'm smiling at your classmate, Francis. Uh, he's he's having a lovely, lovely day, by the way. So. He slept well. Uh, he's all smiles. He's, you know, his hundred percent focus and attention is on me. Uh, he's physically present here and also mentally present here. So I'm just having a go at him. So uh, those of you online, say hi to Francis. I let him know that you've said hi. <laughs> hey. Cool, cool. Uh, we're just having a little bit of fun. Um, right. So uh, we've covered all of that. Um, and we've kind of at least established that praise is important. <laughs> yeah, Krisha says hi, Francis. Hi. And Francis says hi back, Krisha. So, <laughs> awesome. Okay, so now we look at uh, chapter four today. Um, sorry. Chapter four is the power of praise. Okay, so the power of praise. Um, let's go to Second Chronicles, the book of Second Chronicles. Uh, 
In the previous chapters, what we've covered, we also learned that um, we praise uh, God for so many reasons, right? We praise Him uh, because He is good. We praise Him because He is faithful. We praise Him because He is wonderful uh, and all of it, right? There are so many things for His great deeds, for all everything that He's done for us, we praise Him. And uh, we also learned that, but heaven praises Him for only one reason, and that is He is he is worthy okay everybody say worthy okay uh, one more time worthy okay yogya is that correct okay um, he is worthy uh, that's if, if there's anything that we can take back from uh, from this course is with the revelation of we praise him because he is worthy we praising and worship is not just singing a song it's not based on your feeling Right, that's one of the reasons why I ask you, how you're feeling this morning. Like, I don't feel like learning about praise and worship today, but that's different. But you know, choosing him, choosing to praise him and worship uh, with the revelation that he is worthy, uh, it's 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 important. Okay, so today uh, I want to just share from one of my favorite passages and a very popular passage. Uh, and I say popular, it's most one of the most well-read, most read chapters in the Bible all across um, the world uh, when it comes to the understanding the power of praise uh, and worship. So you guys ready? Second Chronicles chapter 20. Okay, if you're still looking for it, please come forward. I will pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a good time, guys, today. So, are right, you guys ready to learn? Yep. Am I too loud? Is this too loud? Okay. Please let me know. Francis can always reduce the volume. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, we're going to read the entire chapter. You can let him know if it's too loud or too soft whenever it is, right? Cool. Um, Second Chronicles chapter 20. Thanks, friends. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites and some Munites came to make war on Jehoshaphat. Okay. Moabites, Ammonites, and the Munites. Okay, everybody say Moabites, Ammonites, Munites, Parasites. No, it's not there, guys. Come on. It's not, it's not. So all the sites came okay, to uh, make war on Jehoshaphat. Okay, So some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom. From the other side of the sea, it is already in Hazazon, Tamar, that is Engedi. Engedi is a place where uh, it's it's like a valley with waters um, where all these mountain deers would come to drink. Okay, so it's like a valley of waters. It's beautiful. Um, most of the war took place in the valleys, so that's why they've mentioned here. That is Engedi. Okay, um, alarmed Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. Okay, so there is an amazing progression here. Uh, I want to take time in reading this uh, chapter because it, every verse is like a precious gold, okay, gem. Um, so first thing, it starts off by saying all these nations, Moabites, Ammonites, Munites, they're all coming to make war on Jehoshaphat, right? What does it say, war? Everybody is coming home for dinner. They're not coming to have a nice meal with him, right? Uh, so war in those days was more brutal. It's very right. Uh, they meant business. So a vast army is coming against you from Edom. Okay, Edom is another word or name of the country for Philistines. Okay, uh, so who Goliath was an Edomite. Okay, so if you have you heard of this person called Obed Edom, right? Um, so it just goes on to say, okay, this person was from the place called Edomite. Okay, so and Edom was made of many nations. Uh, it's like all these Moabites and you know, ites. 
alarmed Jehoshaphat, look at his response. He was alarmed. He didn't panic. He didn't go into, okay, let me Google and see how do I defeat the army. They're like, okay, talk to my friends. You know, it's like, oh, okay, hey, hey, what's happening? This army is coming. What do I do? What do I do? Panic mode. But he was alarmed. But his first response is to inquire of the Lord. Okay, this is this is where we begin to understand the power of praise, which is when we go to the source itself, that is God. Okay. And he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Okay, let's pause. The people of Judah, so King Jehoshaphat, okay, a king of an entire nation declared what? Fast. What does fasting do? Abstain from food, maybe drinking. I don't, I don't know what kind of fast it was. But an army is coming to attack you. You need energy. <laughs> what gives you energy? Right? If you, if you don't eat, if you don't have the energy, you're not going to be able to uh, fight. Right? But then instead, he calls a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Underline, seek him. Okay? So we played hide and seek, right? Yeah? Um, yes, no? Oh, oh no, was it was it just my generation that's played hide and seek? You guys are all too cool to play hide and seek. Hide and seek. I don't play hide and seek. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? So they all came to seek him. Verse 5. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah. And Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, okay, pause. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of, in the assembly of, okay, another meaning, meaning for Judah is praise, right? Okay, so he stood in the assembly of Judah, which means praise and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard. And he said, this is important, guys. Pay attention, okay? Verse 6. O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God who is in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. O our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people, Israel, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or, or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. Are you with me, guys? Are you all with me so far? Right? It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful narrative. It's a beautiful storytelling, uh, you know, the way uh, everything is being built up from the from the background to whatnot. So we know that these three nations, only three nations are coming. I'm saying only three nations, but three nations, okay? Imagine India, and then there's our neighboring countries, okay? Pakistan and Bangladesh or China, Mongolia, whatever. They're trying to invade our land, right? It's not... It's... it's <sighs> It's, it's going to make us nervous. That's what's happening here. But Jehoshaphat calls the entire nation. And beautiful, it, it says in verse 4 that people from Judah came from every town. So everybody say every town. Every town. Okay. <laughs> yeah, some of us are physically present here, but mentally, my gosh, we are somewhere else. <laughs> we are in cloud nine. Okay. 
Uh, okay. Uh, focus, focus, Roshan. All right. <laughs> It's a serious passage. OK, let's focus. OK. But look at the humility of the king of Judah. OK, he's like, I am the king of Judah. He's not saying, I know what to do. Let's go to war. But he calls people for fast. In his humility, in the presence of every people, he is reminding himself and the nation of who God is. Right? He says, are you not God? King of all nations, power and might is in your hands. Right? He's declaring. It's important to declare and say, it's like who God is and what he's done in your life. Right? I mean, so many times we might feel like, okay, all of this is happening. The whole world is fighting against you and whatnot. But what's one thing that's helped me is pause and say, okay, everything that God has done good in my life. Right? And say, okay, you saw me through 34 years of my life and you're going to see me through all the days of my life, right? So that's exactly what Jehoshaphat is doing. Verse 10, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, just in case you've forgotten where we are. Okay, verse 10. Now, here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away and from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Verse 12. This is important. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. I love these next lines. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Right? We do not know what to do, but our eyes are up on you. Wow. Okay. How many times we've been in a place like that where we don't know what to do? Has anybody been in a place like that? Right? <laughs> many, many times. Okay. Like, this. It feels like okay. There's a spiritual warfare. Uh, you know, all of this is happening. Nothing and nothing right is going on in my life. Uh, my family needs a financial breakthrough, healing, sickness, and whatnot. But there's something beautiful about going before God in humility and saying, "I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on You." That's exactly what Jehoshaphat is saying, right? You're with me so far. Everybody is understanding the story. Yeah. It's a storytelling time. Yeah. Verse 13. All the men of Judah, okay, all the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones, that means infants, stood there before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite and a descendant of Asaph as he stood in the assembly. Verse 19, sorry, 15. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours but God's. Right? But the battle is not yours but God's. Okay, so when is the response coming? When people have decided to seek him, when people have decided to humble themselves and say, okay, we're going to seek help from God. Uh, we want you to help us. You speak. We are here to pray. And then the Spirit of the Lord came upon this prophet. And then he speaks. And God says, it's not your battle. It's mine. Verse 16. Here we go. Tomorrow march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. Verse 17, guys, important. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. 
O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Verse 18, Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Let's pause there. Okay, too much reading. Too much reading? Okay. Uh, so what, what, what has happened here? Can someone tell me what's happened? What has happened so far from what we've read? Little louder, Karen. Battle belongs to the Lord, okay. Yeah. So, so stand there. Uh, you will not have to fight the battle. Battle belongs to God. Okay, what else? What else? It's, it's a question. Sorry? Okay. Yeah, what else? Sure. Us. Fire is going on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. What is okay? Like I saying, okay, there's there's no right answer or wrong answer, but I want to understand what you've understood from here, like till this so far. Okay, Jachin is saying they need not fight, but victory will come from God as they sought His help. Okay, thank you. What else? What else? What else? There's something very important that's happening here. God's revealing their plans. Yeah, so God is telling them, like prophetically saying, okay, where the enemy is going to be, they're going to come up from this side. You go down from this side, meet them there, okay? He's giving them the strategy, right? But, okay, go on. Worshipping God, okay, yeah. They don't have to be afraid, discouraged, dismayed. Because he is going before them, okay? Sorry? Okay. This sought after God and the God spoke to him, yeah? Okay, and Nina is saying, when there was a problem, Jehoshaphat J proclaimed a fast, uh, the response came when they assembled before the Lord, yeah? So the response came again. So let's just build up to this whole thing, okay? It's very, very, very important, okay? The progression of this whole thing. Enemy is attacking. Jehoshaphat responds by inquiring of the Lord as a king, right? So... What is in it for us over here? Why am I stressing on the importance of the first response of Jehoshaphat was he inquired of the Lord. He was a king, in other words, a leader. Most of us, if you are not already a leader, you are going to be a leader. You are going to be leading a ministry, or some of you might already be leading one. I don't know, right? But your first response when you have a problem is not panic, is to inquire of the Lord, Okay, and, and that's what he does. And then he brings in all the nation to uh, the fast, uh, and they seek after God, and then the Spirit of God comes and responds, and God tells him, okay, you don't have to fight this battle, uh, all, etc., etc., whatnot. Okay, question. Have they gone into battle already? Till what we've read? Battle. Have they gone into battle already? Yes, no, maybe. No, right? So God has only told them that, okay, you have to go into battle tomorrow. That if you haven't gone into battle already, that means you haven't still seen the victory. Yes or no? But God's word for them was enough, 
when god said this battle belongs to me this is not your battle this is my battle all you have to do is stand that was enough for jehoshaphat and his people and so their their response was they bowed down in worship even before they saw the victory are you guys with me right they worshiped even before they saw the victory and they fell down in worship before the Lord. And now let's go to verse 19. And some Levites from the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up and praised the Lord. Okay, now side note, verse 19, listen. Then some Levites from Kohathites and Korahites. Uh, I want you to go and study about who these Kohathites are and who these Korahites are. Okay, because next class I will ask you all. Oh, this is when I will decide to take notes. Oh, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> this is, oh, I just woke up from my sleep. <laughs> okay. Uh, who are these Kohathites? Korahites? In fact, um, there are three clans that come out from the tribe of Levites. Okay. Three clans. And I want you to study on them. Okay. Um, So then some Levites from the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with the Shabbat, with a very loud voice. Okay. So verse 20 now. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah, and the people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out ahead of the army. This is practically, realistically speaking, wrong in so many levels. Have you seen a war movie? Anybody? War movie. Let me use another word. Have you seen Bahubali? <laughs> right? You, uh, any uh, any war movies? Like I like war movies. You see tanks and soldiers with their guns. You know, you don't see a band in front of an army. Anybody seen a, a band like? Uh, let's have the Beatles come and you know play some song and then we go into the battle. Yeah, let's have some. Okay, Shiraz, come and lead worship. Uh, you know, before we're gonna go into the war. Does it happen? But Jehoshaphat has realized something in this journey. There is power, once again, in humility, in seeking after God, in surrender, leaning on His wisdom and not on His own understanding or on His own wisdom. And then he tells, I'm going to put a worship team in front of the army. We are going to go into war. Everybody is there with swords, right, ready to chop your head off. But it's like, I want worshippers in the front. Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. They are not even praising him for a breakthrough. Right? Most of the times we praise him because we, I need a breakthrough, which is fine. Right? He's not saying, let's praise him so that this enemy gets defeated. Are you guys with me? Every word is important in this passage. Okay, so he's saying, praise him. For the splendor of his holiness. I don't know what your translation is saying. Okay, uh, Praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out ahead of the army. Right? So that's what they did. They just praised him for who he is. Everybody say, who he is. Okay, sometimes we need to praise him. Not sometimes. Most of the times, if not all the time, we need to praise him for 
who he is. Not so we can get a breakthrough. Our God is good. He's a good father. He will give you the breakthrough. All that is great. But sometimes you need to tell yourself, I need to praise him for who he is. And who he is, is that he is worthy. He is holy. And he is Yahweh. And he is God alone. Right? That's all we need. We don't need to have like uh, any major revelation. It's like, okay, he provided me new shoes, so I'm going to praise him. He's given me a new car. He's given me a new job. He's given me all these things, so I'm going to praise him. All that is good. It's good to praise him. It's good to thank him. But we need to just stop and praise him for who he is. We need to know that in our journey as ministry leaders. We need to know that. That's what I was sharing with the team yesterday uh, when I was uh, the worship team in church. Is uh, so when we were singing, we we had the song called "Every Praise Is to Our God." Uh, it's very intentional. The first two line words of that song is "Every Praise." I was telling them, guys, when we are going out to lead in worship, is minister from that place where we are not expecting anything but praise him for who he is and when that happens you will see a new worshiper arise from within you can i say that again when you begin to praise him for who he is a new person of inside of you comes out it's like you did not know okay i could praise him like this you'll be like did i do that did I scream like that? Did I actually lift my hands? Are you guys with me? Right? So praise him for who he is. And listen to the amazing song that they sang. One verse, one chorus, another verse, another chorus. And there's a bridge over there. And there's an additional tag. It's, 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 yeah, it's the most awesome song ever. Just two lines. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. That is all they sang. Okay, let, can I remind you again that they are going up against an army. And this army wants to kill you. <laughs> and there's a worship team in front of the army. And they are singing this beautiful two-line song, Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. One more verse. Is that okay? Verse 22. As they began to sing and praise. Okay, everybody say, as they began to sing and praise. Okay. The Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated okay so long story short is they fought each other they killed each other and they destroyed them each other so they did not even the Judah people of Judah did not have to do anything they didn't even have to fight but God caused an ambush as they were praising him as they were singing thanks to the Lord are you guys with me Right, I want us to just pause and just remind us that there is power in praise. There is power in your praise. Okay, in your weakest, when you feel the most weakest and the most vulnerable, that's when your praise is the most powerful. Okay, in your weakest moments, in your lowest moments, that's when the devil is most scared of your praise because that's when he knows your praise is the most powerful. Are you guys with me? Right? So there is power in praise in general, but there is power in your praise. Okay? There is power in your praise. Right, guys? Okay. Um, Let's go to another passage uh, in the New Testament, it, uh, Acts chapter 16. Everyone online, you're doing okay? 
Yeah. Yeah, you guys learning something? Yes, no, maybe. Acts chapter 16. Okay, so uh, we, I want to read from verse 16, actually. So um, more scripture reading. I hope you guys are okay. Acts chapter 16, verse 16 onwards, for us to just understand the context um, for the text that we are reading. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, these men are the servants of the Most High God. Okay, so let's come fast forward, come down to verse 22. So basically, long story short there, uh, people there did not like what they were doing, Paul and Silas. So what they do, the, verse 22, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. And the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. Underline stripped and beaten, or whichever words there. The magistrates order them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and a jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the Stocks. Is that what it says in your translation? Stocks. What else does it say? Sorry? Keep them securely. Okay. So, and fasten their feet to some anything? Stocks only, right? Okay. Cool. Okay. So, let's pause there. All right. So, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. Now, here we don't have a vast army like what we read in 2 Chronicles 20, but a crowd. Has anyone here been attacked by a crowd? It's still dangerous, isn't it? It's not nice. Like, you know, it's it's pretty scary. The crowd joined them in attack against the Paul and Silas. Magistrates, that the government officials, ordered them to be stripped and stripped and beaten. So they were not just beaten. They were stripped and beaten. Now, it's funny that uh, I'm just reminded, but I'm also not very proud of it. So, um, I don't know how parents these days are. They're very nice. But when I was growing up, my dad was very strict. A anyone dad very strict over here? OK. So <laughs> right, so, uh, and if he, when I've done some, I was not a very a good child. I was very naughty. Okay. <laughs> um, very rebellious uh, and whatnot. So he would hit me sometimes, you know, with the belt and whatnot, you know, because. Uh, and then uh, there are times when he knows, like, you know, when he's hitting me, I will not react to anything. Uh, why? Because I'm wearing a jeans. And, uh, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, why well, you're not reacting, types, you know, because I'm just controlling, you know, he's not hurting as much because it's pretty tough, isn't it? He learned that. He got to know it's not hurting me. It's like, remove your pants. <laughs> Whacked, you know, so it's not pleasant, guys. <laughs> it's funny now. Okay, it's funny in this class now. But, uh, <laughs> but it wasn't, yeah. Uh, but it's a very embarrassing situation right here, right now, to an adult, right? When Two adults in public are being stripped. Now, we don't know if they were stripped naked or whatnot. I don't know. But being stripped in itself is embarrassing. Yes or no? As if that wasn't enough, they are beaten. Now, we don't know how the crowd uh, reacted 
verse 23 after they had been severely flogged you know what flogging is so this punishment in the roman rule was called grace okay so it was like you see passion of christ right with that thing it would have those clippers at the end that can pull your flesh out okay um so that was called grace and it was 39 lashes you know why it's called grace because the 40th lash will kill you they will be beaten 39 times that's flogging and the punishment was called grace because the 40th lash will kill you so they will bring you to that edge of death until you can't do anything and the only thing that you're doing by default little bit is breathing that is where they are and then it goes on to say they put them in the cell and had their feet tied to a stalk now uh i don't know how to show i have an image to show you guys online about how they were tied but then you're not going to be able to see this on people online so please excuse me okay so let's say you sit down and your hands are like tied to the ankle like you know it's like they have like a wooden plank so it'll go into your feet and then so most of the times an adult man can't easily reach his ankle are you with me an adult man can't easily reach you have to bend or you know to but what they would do is when it doesn't reach they will pull the shoulders so the shoulders are dislocated okay yeah so i've i've experienced shoulder dislocation exactly 10 years ago 10 years ago july yeah I, in my 25th birthday I slid down the stairs. Uh, I didn't want my head to hit the stairs, so I held the grill. Uh, but I was going down too fast. I held the grill, but the hand came up. Patak! I heard that sound. So this curved thing that you see over here was flat. OK, so it was like a bone was piercing me inside. And my friends who were taking me to the hospital did not have a nice time. They had to hear a mouth pull. <laughs> but it was, trust me, it's just one hand. It was very painful. But. That's where these guys are. They are embarrassed publicly, humiliated in front of people. They are stripped. They are stripped. They are beaten almost to death. Their feet are tied to the stalks and their shoulders probably dislocated. You know where we're going with this, right? Next verse, verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. Okay, so we all know the power, uh, the rest of the story, right? In this condition, you can think of the best singer in the world. And I'm pretty sure that they're not going, they're not feeling like singing. Whoever the singer that you listen to, all right. But these guys started singing, they started praising God, and the earth starts shaking. But the beauty of this is listen, guys, the beauty of this passage is when they started praising, the Bible doesn't say Paul's chains and Silas's chains broke. Does it say that? It just doesn't say Paul's chains and Silas's chains broke. It says every other prison doors opened and every prisoners were set free. So, pause. So we've understood, we've learned that there is power in praise. There is power in your praise. 
and in your praise the breakthrough is not just for you it's for people around you you might not even be praying for them Paul and Silas doesn't say, okay, Lord, now we pray for this jailer number nine cell. For all these reasons that he has committed, you know, please forgive him. Nothing. I stand in the gap, I intercede. Nothing. They were just praising God. And every other prisoner was set free. Amen. That is the power of praise. People. That is the power of praise. Now we can uh, learn a lot more about it. Uh, but as I always say, uh, just go back and read more scriptures that is mentioned in your notes. Um, because of time, I'm, I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, but you go through it. Make your notes. Write your own thing. Um, there's so much depth in just understanding the power of praise. Amen? Yep. So let's just pause here. And um, we'll take a break. And uh, we'll resume after that, okay? See you.